In the previous videos, we talked about the Ethernet protocol. In this video, we'll consider network devices. Before that, I'd like us to consider a network without special network devices, that is, a network using classic Ethernet, where all computers are attached to a single cable. In this case, if computer A sends a message to another computer, for instance, B, the message is sent over the shared cable and all devices receive it. Can you think of some problems with this network structure? First, overload. All network frames are received by all computers. Let's say A wants to send a frame to B. C also sees this frame and has to realize that it is not destined to his address and thus C has to discard the frame. This process takes time and resources. Second, privacy. If C sees every message sent from A to B and vice versa, this means that the privacy is violated. We would rather have a network where only A and B see the messages sent between them. Third, extensibility. This network is not really extensible. Let's say that up to 10 computers can attach to this cable. What happens when we need one more computer? We have to replace the entire cable. This is both expensive and inconvenient. Well, the person who actually has to replace the cable is probably the IT guy. You know, the one who makes sure that everything runs well in your network and is rarely noticed until something bad happens. At least when you work in an organization large enough to have IT people. Just to be clear, we love the IT guy. We want his life to be good. We don't want him to be running around buying cables all the time. Another issue that rises from this network is collisions. Let's say that A wants to send a message to B and C wants to send a message to D. On the same time, both of them might start their transmission and the messages will collide. In this case, we get errors, much like the case where two people start to speak in the same time and it is impossible to understand either of them. In addition, this network structure might lead to starvation. Let's say that A is transmitting a frame. If the other stations wish to avoid collisions, they will refrain from sending data. But now, A can keep on transmitting forever, thereby taking all the bandwidth to himself and not letting any other station speak. This is called starvation. Well, it, this doesn't seem like the best network, does it? We shall now get to know network devices that help deal with these issues. One device that solves only the extensibility issue is called a hub. A hub is a device with multiple ports that single Ethernet cables are connected to. So now, instead of having one cable with multiple ports with many computers attached to it, we have instead a single hub and each computer is connected to it via a single cable. This makes the IT guy's life much easier. The hub simply takes the pulse it receives and multiplies it, that is, sends it to all other ports. For example, if A sends a frame to B, the hub will send this frame to B, C, and D, all ports except A's port. The hub doesn't understand Ethernet and doesn't know anything about MAC addresses. For the hub, all bits are just bits transmitted over the wire, and these bits should get to all other ends. Now, if we need to add a new computer to the network, we simply connect it to the hub. What happens if the hub runs out of ports? No problem, we'll connect it to another hub, like so. Nice, this is a lot easier to maintain than what we've seen before. Yet, at least with classic hubs, all other issues still remain. Since all computers receive the frame sent from A to B, there is no privacy. The network is overloaded, collisions may occur, and the network is prone to starvation. What we really want is a device that, when A sends a frame to B, forwards that frame to B, and only B. This device is called a switch. If all the stations are connected via a switch, and A sends a frame to B, only B receives it. Notice that this means that all issues are indeed solved. The devices won't be overloaded as every frame will get only to the relevant recipients. 
There are no privacy issues since, apart from the switch, only A and B see the frame. The network is easily extensible by plugging additional switches if needed. The switch can avoid collisions as every connection between a switch and an endpoint is a single collision domain. That is, the switch will refrain from sending more than one frame on a single wire at the same time. Similarly, there will be no starvation as B and C can communicate with one another while A is sending data. Even if A keeps sending frames destined to the entire network, that is the broadcast address, the switch can allow messages sent by other hosts to be transferred in between. But how can this magical switch operate? Let's say we've just bought a brand new switch and plug it into the network. A sends a frame destined to B. How does the switch know where computer B resides? One option would be to manually configure the switch, that is, have a table mapping between a MAC address and the relevant port, and have someone manually configure that table. When we say someone, we usually mean the IT guy. And, well, we love IT guys. We wouldn't want to make them do this tedious job every time. In addition, I don't know about you, but most people don't usually have an IT guy at home for every time they plug in a device into their network. Another option would be to send a special message from the switch to every port, and then the endpoints will reply with their MAC addresses. The major downside here is that we now have to make all devices aware of the switch. We need to change the device's behavior so they reply to the special message. It would be so much better if the switch were just transparent. No endpoint will need to know that it's there, but it will still do the job. Apparently, this can indeed be achieved. Let us consider this network with a brand new switch that has just been added to the network. The switch stores a table mapping a MAC address to a physical port. This table is initially empty. Now, A sends a frame to B. The switch understands Ethernet and can look at the frame's header and read the source address. Since this source address maps to A, and since the message has been sent from physical port number 2, the switch adds the mapping of A's MAC address and port number 2 to its table. But what will the switch do with the frame? Well, for now, the switch doesn't know where B resides, so the switch simply multiplies the frame and sends it to all ports, just like a hub would do. So for now, B, C, and D all receive the frame. Next, A sends another message to B. The switch looks at it and already knows that A's MAC address is plugged to port number 2. It still doesn't know B, so this frame is also sent to all other ports. Now, C sends a frame to A. The switch looks at the source address and adds the mapping between C's MAC address and port number 5 to its table. This time, since the frame is destined to A's MAC address, and since the switch knows that address, the frame can be forwarded to port number 2 and port number 2 only. Next, B sends a message to C. The switch creates a mapping between port number 7 and B's MAC address, which appears at the source address field. The switch can also forward a message to C, as it already knows its address. So, in general, the switch uses the source address field of Ethernet frames to dynamically learn what addresses reside behind every port. How cool is that? Is it possible for two different addresses to map to a single port? For example, to have the address of computer A map to port number 3, and also have the address of computer B map to port number 3? Well, the answer is yes. Consider the following network. Now, when A sends a message to D, it will be sent to switch 1, and then to switch 2, and finally forward by switch 2 to computer D. When switch 2 sees the frame, what address does it see in the source address field? The MAC address of computer A, of course. Notice that switches are transparent and never modify the MAC addresses. So switch 2 learns that the MAC address of A resides behind port number 3. Next, when computer B sends a frame to computer C, this message will also be transferred via switch 1 and then switch 2. So now, switch 2 learns that the MAC address of B resides behind port number 3 as well. 
So, in this case, both the MAC address of A and that of B reside behind port number 3. Note that the switch is not an additional hop. We're not talking about routing here. As we've said earlier, a switch is a transparent device. From the endpoint's perspective, there is no switch. A feels as if it were directly connected to B, C, and D. All devices that are connected via one hop are said to be in the same network segment. So here, all computers and switches, A, B, C, D, switch 1 and switch 2, all reside within the same segment. In the description below, I've added a link to an exercise about hubs and switches. Solve it to make sure you've understood the material we've covered. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments. In this video, we've learned about two network devices. First, a hub, which is basically a first layer device. That is, it only transmits bits from one port to other ports without understanding any protocols. Second, we got to know a second layer network device, namely a switch which already understands the Ethernet protocol and MAC addresses and uses that knowledge in order to transfer frames only to relevant ports, at least once it knows the network. In the next video, we'll ask ourselves in what cases we might be able to see messages being sent from one endpoint to another, even when they are not destined to our address.